Tightly packed and staying low to the ground with spears, sticks and machetes. South African police force these miners into an area with razor wire. Then they box them in using armoured vehicles. Then this happened. All of this to break up a protest by miners who have been demanding more pay. Ten people had been killed since the start of this illegal strike and violence blamed on union rivalry. Now more families will be mourning. But with alleged killers among their ranks, including those who had hacked two police officers to death on Monday, this was the bloody aftermath. An hour after the first shots were fired, the ambulances arrived. Some of the men who have been injured are receiving medical attention just beyond those cars there. Their family and friends have started to gather at the township area, which is just by that power pylon. There's a group of people getting together, waiting for information as to whether their loved one is dead or alive. Earlier, a union leader tried to get the miners to return to work, but they said they'd been promised a pay rise and they weren't moving until they got it, and their managers came to talk to them. Given the riches beneath their feet at the platinum mine, one union leader said it was only fair they get more pay. As long as the bosses, senior management getting fat checks, that's good for them. And these workers subjected to poverty for life. Democracy, 18 years of democracy, the mine worker is still earning 3,000 under those harsh conditions underground. What started violently has ended in bloodshed few could have foreseen. It has left labour relations at Lonman Mine in tatters and families angry with grief. Tania Page, Al Jazeera, Rustenburg, South Africa.